Lesson 21, Multiplying Fractions. In this lesson, students will follow along with their teacher or their parent to complete the lesson. So let's get started. Here, we have 1 half times 1 fourth. And we're going to do a demo with an index card so that we can see what's going on. Here's my card, and we're going to fold it according to the problem. Here's 1 half times 1 fourth. We're going to start off by folding it into 1 half. So here's my card, and I'll fold it into 1 half. Next, we're going to take this half of a card and fold it into 1 fourth. So I'll take this, fold it, and fold it again. And let me open up really quickly so that you can see that I folded it into four more parts. Fold it back up. And now I'm going to shade in this portion that we have here. So let's go ahead and shade it in really quickly. And the question is, when I open this back up again, how much of the original card has been shaded in? And by this point in their lives, students have folded a lot of pieces of paper, so they intuitively know that when you open it up, one eighth of the card has been filled in. In fact, let me draw the line so it's a little easier to see. And you can see here that one eighth of the card has been shaded in. So for our answer, we'll go ahead and write down one eighth. Now here's the big question. Taking a look at the numbers that we started with, how did we end up with one eighth? And students can easily figure out the rule that all you did was do one times one to get one, and two times four gives you eight. So multiplying fractions is actually a lot easier than adding and subtracting fractions. All you do is just multiply across, just like we did here. Also notice that it says to simplify first, if possible. Now let's answer two questions that will make it even easier to multiply fractions. Here's the first question. The first question asks, should we simplify first or simplify last? And we'll look at two examples so that we can find the answer to that question. Here, we're going to multiply, then we're going to simplify last. On the other side, we're going to simplify first, and then we're going to multiply, and we'll see if it makes any difference. So on this side, let's multiply, then simplify. What's 3 times 4? That gives you 12. What's 8 times 5? that gives you 40. So write it down. And remember, we had to simplify our answers, so let's go ahead and do that now. The GCF of 12 and 40 is 4, so divide by 4, divide by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3, write it down. 40 divided by 4 is 10, so write it down. And box your final answer of 3 tenths. Now let's look at the other example. Instead of simplifying last, here we're going to simplify first and then we'll multiply. So look at 3 eighths and 4 fifths. Can we simplify 3 eighths? No, because it's already in simplest terms. How about 4 fifths? That's already in simplest form as well. So what is there available to simplify? And it turns out that when you're multiplying fractions, you can simplify going across fractions, just like this. And the reason you can do that is 4 is a numerator, 8 is a denominator. So even though it doesn't look like it at first, this is actually a Notre Dame problem, which means that we can use a GCF to simplify them. So the GCF of 4 and 8 is 4. Divide by 4, divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and now let's multiply. 3 times 1 is 3, 
2 times 5 is 10. Write it down and box your final answer of 3 tenths. And you'll notice that it's the exact same answer that we got when we did it the other way. So the big question is, what's the difference and why would you rather do it one way versus the other? Let's find out. Here, when we simplified last, just like we did here, what was the biggest number that we had to deal with? And that would be 40 right here. So I'll write it down. Next, when you simplified first, just like we did here, what's the biggest number that you had to deal with? And that would be the 10 right here. So I'll write it down. And these smaller numbers are a lot easier to deal with, and that's why we should simplify first. Here, since you got the same final answer either way, should you simplify first or simplify last? And since simplifying first gives us smaller numbers to work with, we should go ahead and simplify first instead of simplifying last. So I'll write it down. Here's the next question that we're going to answer. If possible, can you simplify twice? So let's find out. Here, we're going to multiply, then simplify. On the other side, we're going to simplify twice and then multiply, and we'll see what difference it makes. Here, we'll multiply first. 2 times 3 is 6. 9 times 4 is 36. Simplify, and you can use the magic question to do that. We'll divide by 6, divide by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 36 divided by 6 is 6. Write it down and box your final answer of 1 sixth. On the other side, we'll simplify twice, then we'll multiply. So 2 ninths, we can't simplify. 3 fourths is already simplified as well. So let's see if we can simplify going across. And here, we can simplify 9 and 3. We can divide by 3 and divide by 3. This gives us 1 and 3. Here, we can simplify the 2 and the 4. Divide by 2, divide by 2. This gives us 1 and 2. Now let's multiply. 1 times 1 is 1. Write it down. 3 times 2 is 6, write it down, and box your final answer of 1 sixth. And you'll notice that this is the same answer that we got in the other example. So the question again is, what's the difference? Here, when we simplified last, what was the biggest number that we had to deal with? And here, the biggest number was 36. Next question, when you simplified first, what was the biggest number you had to deal with? And here, the biggest number that we had to work with was the 9 right here. So I'll write it down. And these smaller numbers are a lot easier to work with, and that's why we should simplify first whenever possible. And in fact, we were able to simplify twice. So when possible, should you simplify once or simplify twice? And the answer is simplify twice.